So the big question is this, how do value-obsessed leaders ascend their business and life to world-class levels of effectiveness, even if they're inside a bureaucracy or starting from scratch with absolutely no capital? That is the question, and this podcast is going to bring you the answer. My name is Doug Utberg, and this is the Terminal Value Podcast. Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Dia Irby with us today, and we're going to be talking about connectedness in the post-pandemic environment. And the reason why your connectedness and community, I think, is so important is because, you know, at the time of this recording in March of 2022, we've all spent about the last two years essentially becoming social hermits, uh, which is where we've really had almost no opportunity to genuinely connect with each other anymore. And now, hopefully, I have my fingers crossed for people who are listening uh, who are listening as opposed to watching, uh, will be able to start getting back together a little more. Uh, but Dia, actually, this is her full topic of expertise. Uh, she was born in the South, as she says, the Deep South, where community is a place where everybody knows literally everything about your life. And then she's moved, I think you said uh, 13 hours away, but you've moved like a ridiculous amount of times uh, and have had to uh, go through reestablishing community every time. So I think that's a really engaging topic, a really important topic right now. Uh, so Dia, don't let me talk too much. Uh, in introduce yourself. Uh, are you a leader in the marketplace? And do you wonder how you can build a fire under your team members without scorching them yeah. how do you keep your team workers that are good without shackles well, yeah, well I, yes that's what i talk about outstanding Build atmosphere of community well, and, and because I think that, you know, that atmosphere of community is really important, both on a personal context, but like you said, on a, in a team context as well, uh, because at least there was a report I recently read from recruiter.com, which said that roughly one out of four people plan on quitting their job in you know, this year. And that means retention is going to be yes. a, yeah, retention is, go I mean, because yeah, there's great resignation. People say, oh yeah, people are going to resign. One in four. Just think about that for a second. One in four. Four. That's a lot. Uh, and so that means that retention is going to probably be more important than it really ever has been in the contemporary era. Totally, totally. And also talking about statistics, 61% of people claim that they're lonely. Yeah. And yeah. And you, so, so, so I think uh, now, again, I, I'm a natural optimist. So what I would say is if 61% people feel, percent of people uh, feel lonely, that means that you know, you no, don't have to, yeah, yeah. yeah. well, that, that means you don't have to generate all that. You want to create a lot of connectedness, but if you create even a little connectedness to somebody who's lonely, that will create a bond that will help with retention, that will help with driving increased performance and will help them to, you know, to, you know, to really uh, collaborate better with their overall team. I, exactly. And I have a quote that I use in the sea of humanity belonging is a shore that gives security love and identity and people don't just want to be connected they don't yeah. want to like a, a belong to the gym connected yeah. they want to be claimed which happens to be ah. my and My five facet strategy for accomplishing building community in the workplace. Now, the strategy of this also works in any personal relationship, yeah. even as parents with your children. People want to be claimed. All right. Well, OK, so you, you just teased the five facets of the strategy. So let, let, let's hear what they are. All right. Well, first is C is for chosen. Mm -hmm. Now, you go for an interview, and you've interviewed the person, and how excited are they to know that they've been chosen Yeah. And in a relationship? You make sure that other people know that you are choosing to spend time with them. And even with our children, my husband would say, if all the children in all the world were lined up, God said I could pick anyone, I would pick you. So just it's that, that feeling of choosing i mean how many people have been in gym class in elementary school when the coach says pick your team 
and the devastation of being chosen last. Yes. This is this is inside. We yeah. want to know we're chosen. Uh, and yes. how, however you can do that, communicate that to your team members or the people you have relationships with, that is valuable. Well, and I think that it's, and, and it's like you said, it's not just that uh, that that you know, letting people know that they're chosen once, but it's letting them know re repeatedly that okay, no, this isn't just a situation of convenience. I really do want you to be here. Right. And I, uh, I can't imagine anybody getting tired of hearing that. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, and you were exactly right, Doug. People want to know that they're wanted. Mm -hmm. And the L, you want to guess what the L is? It's pretty obvious. Oh, let's see. Well, and so because I uh, and so I am actually going to have to guess because I didn't get through snoop, uh, snooping your website enough to, to know the answer ahead of time. <laughs> so I'm going to have to. I'm going to guess loyalty. But I may be Ooh, that's good. But where does it come from? Is people want to know that they're loved? Ah, okay. All right. Well, that I was going to say that would have been my second choice. But. Yes. <laughs> See, your loyal uh, and loyalty comes from love. And mm -hmm. what does love look like in the workplace? It, it's a workplace that offers security and uh, non-judgment. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't hold people's feet to the fire mm -hmm. without yeah. burning them. That doesn't mean you don't have uh, work reviews. Yeah. But how you communicate that they always know that you are putting them first in yeah. who they are. You're accepting them for who they are. And of course, this works in any personal relationship. And in parenting, I did a, a I was a speaker for a summit uh, for parent, for entrepreneurs, and uh -huh. I spoke about parentpreneurs yeah. and how you make sure you have time to let your family know that you love them. But this works if you have team members. You're working on a team. Yeah. You want to make sure that you're not, well, showing favorites. Yeah. That's not very loving. Right? Okay. Yeah. Since you didn't scoop it out, do you want to guess what the A stands oh, for? Oh, goodness gracious. All right. I'm 0 for 1 so far. So I'm going to have to see. if. I, <laughs> let's see. So the A. Um, so if I say um, achieve, I'm going to, I'm going to say achievements as in make sure to call out their achievements. Although there's, there may be something obvious that I'm stepping over. You are the concept. You win. You get 500 points because you got the concept right. Okay. Okay. A means acknowledged. Okay. So yes, because, you know, productive people are not always acknowledged, but acknowledged people are always productive. Ooh, I like that. Yes. I have a, a friend who works middle management or worked middle management, and he was asked to take over a subsidiary of this big company. Yep. And it was his choice. Repurpose it, get rid of it, or build it back up. And one of the first things he did was he heard about everybody saying, we need a wall of fame. You know, recognize people for their accomplishments. And everybody talked about it, but he accomplished it. And he created this wall of fame. Actually, he said, you're chosen. I have, I'm paying a photographer. Here's your appointment. If you don't show up, I'll send him to you and you're going to pay for it. So guess what? People showed up. Everybody showed up. And it was just a turning point of people realizing that all their efforts are going to be acknowledged. Yeah. Well, and uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, a historical quote that I'm thinking of here is uh, one of the famous, many famous Napoleon Bonaparte lines is that people will do amazing things for a small piece of colored ribbon, uh, which is that, you know, it, which is basically saying that, you know, you know, of course, people will put in, a, you know, if, if people have recognition that's acknowledged by other people that impacts their feeling of status, they mm -hmm. will actually go to exceptional lengths to earn that acknowledgement. Totally, totally. Now, we're not going to, like, pass out trophies for everybody that shows up. It's not that. You have to earn it. 
However, it's acknowledged that you've earned it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Okay. Um, because, so. you know, that's almost has a, the opposite effect. Uh-huh. You're not really seeing me. You're not really uh, acknowledging anything I've done except exist. And so that I'll just be motivated to continue to just exist. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like that. That's, I think that's, uh, it's important. Well, and I think one of the things that I'm thinking as we're going through this uh, is that, you know, from a leadership perspective, you really need to put some mental effort into it. If you just sort of, uh, if you just sort of let it fly on the back burner, it'll, you know, it, it will come across really, um, let's just say half-hearted my, you know, I'd, I'd like to use another metaphor, but it's probably not appropriate for all audiences. <laughs> um, you know, it'll come across very half-hearted. Never mind, I'm sure, Doug. <laughs> right, right. So this is intentional and it has yeah. to be intentional. You have to have a plan for implementing these five facets. Yeah. And and you can do a self-check, you know, yeah. you, you do, so, uh, employee or team member evaluations, you need to do one on yourself. Let me stop and think. For each one of my team members, have I made sure that they know that they're chosen? Have I given them a secure environment? Have I shown them love unconditional? Am I acknowledging what they've done? And then we have two more. And what do you think the I stands for? All right. So the, okay. So I'm, uh, I've got, uh, I was, I haven't hit either one dead on yet. I've gotten close. So we'll get this close. One. You're gonna get this one. Okay. I'm going to say that I stands for individual, as in you are respecting their individuality. I'll work so, with that. Okay. So so I'll for okay, and I was gonna say for everybody who's listening and not watching, uh Dia kind of did a little bit of a uh not quite an eye roll, but a look off to the distance to 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 try to, to try to think of how to politely tell me I was wrong. <laughs> Because yeah, I'm it, showing you love and I'm acknowledging your efforts. Well, okay. Well, I, I, okay yeah, so I, I've known enough people from the South to where if you said, oh, bless your little old heart, that I'd know what that meant. <laughs> bless him. God bless. <laughs> so <laughs> the I stands for invested in. Okay. And okay. of course, you're investing in the individual. So that's why I'm making it work for you. Okay. <laughs> invested in. So there are. You know, you can invest in your team members or your relationship yeah. people with money. Yeah. I mean, that's when you think of investment, you think of money. But what else? What else can you invest in someone? Well, you can invest time. You can invest attention. Um, you know, you. I'll say I'm th- time and attention are the you know they're related, but they're the two that I'm thinking of. Uh, is uh, what what else has come to your mind, or what else have you seen that's a uh, that's a swing factor? Uh, training, mm, yeah, investing in mentoring, yeah, it, it, which is time and money. <laughs> but if you you know one of the simplest, or like children, do you know how they spell love? T I M E. Yep. Yeah. They want to know that you have time for them. And when you invest time in people, I don't know if you are aware that in the beginning of the 1990s, Campbell's Soup, uh-huh. everybody's favorite. Do you know the history of Campbell's Soup Company? Uh, let's see. So I, 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 I'm going to have to say that I do not. I, I do not know the early history of Campbell's. Please, uh, please enlighten us. Ooh, I knew you were hoping for a scoop on that. Yeah, well, and you know, big, uh, I was gonna say, especially because it's like obscure trivia is kind of my thing. So I, you know, you just, I was gonna say, you just threw a fastball right past me. So, well, Campbell's Soup almost went bankrupt. Uh huh. It almost fell apart, and I didn't review my notes on this, but the person they hired as the CEO, which this will be a trivia search for you to find out his name. He came in and one of the first things he did was invest time with every employee. He wrote handwritten thank you notes, which was an investment of time and energy and research to every single person that worked down to the person that swept the floor 
he wrote handwritten notes and it totally brought up the morale of the company uh -huh. he did a walkabout yeah where he was on the floor and he invested time to hear what everybody was thinking or what they had to say so it can turn a company around or it can yeah. stop a company from going down the drain yeah interesting interesting well and i, I would imagine that probably that, that probably really bolstered the employee engagement totally in 10 years he was there for 10 years and the remarkable change of the whole company is well we can still get our campbell soup yeah, can't can we still get campbell soup yep <laughs> <laughs> right and eyes also it's very interesting so we can use that too right yes so, so investment but also individual and interesting got it yes there you go because you're investing in the individuals that's how yeah. i was making that work and how interesting is that <laughs> okay m okay m i'm okay i would i would initially think it stands for putting your money where your mouth is but that's probably not it <laughs> Okay, so there, there's got to be there's got to be something a little more uh, a little more personal involved. We're going to go back. Yes. So a person wants to be claimed. They want to be told that they're chosen, they're loved, they're acknowledged, they're invested in, and they're mentored. Am I getting there? Close. Marco Polo. Marco Polo. With <laughs> <laughs> All right, put me out of my misery. <laughs> okay. Originally, I had the, see, I have two meanings for the M. Okay. Originally, the M was made for greatness. Okay. Yet, that could be construed as they have to be on the front page of a newspaper or a yeah. magazine. Greatness. So, let's dial that back and say that their greatness is the fact that they matter. Okay. Everybody wants to know that they matter, that if they're not at work, they're missed. If they're not a part of the team, they're missed. Well, that's another M word. So M, <laughs> I get the letters in my mind yeah. and it just starts going. Everybody wants to know they matter. And, and COVID sent everybody home and many people never heard from the outside world to say we miss you yeah you matter now i spent the first maybe six months when we first shut down i'm a realtor yeah. and i had a list of names of people in my database and i just every day i called multiple people and with with only the purpose of saying hey I wanted you to hear from somebody from the outside world. Yeah. I hope you're fine. Is there anything I can do? Do you need groceries? Do you need, yeah. do you need to just tell somebody how you're doing today? Because people want to know they matter. Yeah. No, that's, I think that that's extremely important. I mean, and, and I think the, you know, when you put all these together, what you really have is you, you, you really have a framework for, uh, you know, for really building a deeper relationship with, you know, with the people on your team or with your children or with your spouse or pretty much anybody that you're interacting with. Exactly. And when you claim people, when you do the whole five facets, then you are building community. Yeah. Why? Why? would This is how it boosts the bottom line. It costs more to hire someone new than yeah. it does to pay the salary of the person you already have. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I was going to say, you know, between, you know, because particularly if you're going through an agency, it'll typically run around 20% of their first, you know, of their salary, just in acquisition costs. Plus you also have a, you, you, you know, you're all, you'll have the opportunity cost time of your search. And then you also have the, the, the ramp up time costs. So, I mean, you know, in a, in a practical sense, retention is far more economical than having to replace uh, resource, human resources. Right. There was a, a survey done where they asked the people that ran companies to put in priority what they thought 
the workers would say were the top priorities in the workplace. I was so the, the, I'm gonna I am gonna date myself here, but this this almost sounds like a workplace version of the newlywed game. Oh, you are right, and you did date yourself. <laughs> Not that you dated yourself on the newlywed game, but anyway, <laughs> or the dating game that was another one. Yeah. No, so what's interesting is the all the leaders in the marketplace chose last place what the workers chose as their top priority. Oh, that's interesting. And that is belonging. Huh. Hmm. So that's... the workers, the team people want to know that they are part of a, a community. They want to know that they belong. They want to know they are claimed. Now that's uh, that I think that that last nugget about belonging being number one for the employees, but at the last place on the leadership, that's 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 instructive. Yes, it is. And you know, there's there was a shift in the business world that you have servant leadership. Uh-huh. Where the leaders, their job is to serve their people who yeah. will then be more productive. And this is somewhat of that same concept that when you claim your people, yeah, they know that they're part of something great and they don't want to go anywhere, especially if they're being acknowledged for everything that they are contributing. Yeah, no, uh, I think that's the, uh, absolutely Absolutely. Well, uh, well, <clears throat> okay. So uh, we've we've gone through how to how to how the, our framework on how to make sure that people feel claimed, how to you know you know how, how to really engage with people, and then but uh, I think uh, uh, b before we're done for uh, for this conversation, I think there was one of the things you mentioned in the pre-interview, which is the um, which is driving ROI by ha uh, through community. I I'd like you to touch on that a little bit. It is. <clears throat> implementing claim gotcha because gotcha. when you do when you do build that community you are going to you're not going to have to put a fire under people to get them to produce you're not going to have to shackle the good people so they don't leave yeah and it will improve the bottom line because your return on investment is so mm -hmm. much better now that's uh, that that's really excellent. Well, and well, because like, and one of the things I'm thinking about <clears throat> about here also is that I know that you know when uh, you know in, in in my corporate days, you know when when I was running my teams, one of the things that I always used to tell my team, and I don't know this this may be courting disaster, but one of the things I used, I always used to tell the people on, on on my team was that you know was that yeah you know, I, I understood that at some point they might be looking for another job, and what I'd rather they do is instead of you know instead of looking under the table, if you're looking, let me know. Because a, I'd like to, you know, a, I want to help. But then b, if there are if there are factors that are making you want to look that I can address, I want to do what I can to address them. And I, I found that a lot of people, well, a, they were they really appreciated that openness. Uh, but then b, it at least gave me a chance to try to retain them before they before they went out and were looking for something else. Well, absolutely. If if you don't know something's broken, you can't fix it. Yeah, precisely, precisely. And and you did the exact you. You invested with the I your time to acknowledge that they yeah. had needs and that they were in a secure environment showing them love that they could talk about it and that you were choosing, you were living it, you were doing it. <laughs> and that that you didn't want them to leave because they matter. Uh, well, and that that, that so that's there just you have it too. You, yeah. You did it. So well, now can I, you now can you say the letters? Okay, all right. So let's memory test here. Okay, so we're gonna say chosen, uh -huh. loved, acknowledged, invested, and that they matter. Yes, I'm such a good teacher. Right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was actually having a little bit of anxiety there. I'm like, all right, got to remember here. <laughs> You're gonna be kicked off your own podcast if you don't. I know, right? That. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna. So, sorry, you didn't make the cut for your own podcast. Man. No, Doug, you'd fire me as a guest because I made you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, all right. Well, hey, I really appreciate your time uh, today and today, Dia, and, and excellent, excellent framework for sharing with everyone. Uh, give us one or two uh, last bits of information and then tell people where they can learn more. Last bits of information, just love people. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes open and see the people around you. There are hurting people. Yeah. They're hurting people all around. And just be gentle. I, I saw this expression in a world where you can be anything, be kind. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And you can find out it's really hard. <laughs> Diaerby.com. That's D-E-A-I-R-B-Y.com. Yes. And you can actually I have an ebook I put together that explains claim uh -huh. that's in there. It's in the either the complimentary resources or in my store where you can pay for it <laughs> uh, for a few dollars. Yeah. And you can find out more things about me, but I would love to hear from someone. I hope that what I've shared motivates any leader or any person yeah. that's in a relationship with other people, which yeah. unless you're 61% of the lonely people, hopefully you are in involved being in with some way people yes in some way and yeah. that this has given you something to think about to stop and be intentional in your leadership and in your relationships outstanding all right well dia i really appreciate your time today thank you doug i so appreciate you having me on all right everybody have a wonderful rest of your day Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.